My message for this um, week and our theme for the month is joy. Look to your neighbor and say, we're going to talk about joy today. And tell your face as well, invite your face to that party because it does need to look like there is some joy, okay? Or we're not going to say, we're talking about joy tonight. <laughs> and um, so in my preparation, it actually has been an amazing uh, season. Many of you have known that I've shared also about my, both my pastors that part of, uh, passed away. But this last week, um, and those that are part of the pre-meeting uh, knows that my cousin uh, passed away this last, uh, sorry, uh, a week ago, and it was her funeral this last week. Now, um, we've been out of South Africa for already around about um, 25 years, and I didn't have any direct contact with her any longer, but we got reconnected on Facebook, and that's the beautiful thing for me about especially for us being far away from home, that I can reconnect with my school friends and with my family. And I actually saw that she, this was the family that was the wildest. They were, to me, when I was growing up, the far farthest away from God. Very worldly. My aunt, this, her mom was um, my dad's youngest sister, and she was this belle blonde bombshell where she was the first uh, woman who has had a diamond in her uh, uh, tooth and she worked for this high um, end uh, jeweler and she just looked like a real Zaza girl. And so this family was really real worldly and oh my gosh I remember I had many a tear in the years uh, after I got saved with when the families come together they were just so she was so out there, and of course I was very, very sort of, just when I got saved, you know, just preaching at everybody, <laughs> telling them they've got to sort their lives out, come right, and, you know, let go of the sin, and follow Jesus, and so a little bit legalistic, and I, I just sort of just didn't feel happy in those sort of circumstances. But for me, what is so incredible through just got, uh, getting reconnected with her and just over the years to see how incredibly sovereign God is with our families. <coughs> because in this season of um, not really seeing her for 25 years, she actually, through her sickness, became a believer. Wow. And uh, she was just posting, sharing um, so much of who Jesus have become in her life and we like got connected as spiritual sisters on Facebook and um, to me what was so amazing I was able then to zoom in and uh, they had her funeral and she said she didn't want it to be a sad occasion she wanted it to be a celebration of her life yes. and God's goodness and you know what was so amazing to me? Uh, zooming <coughs> in and just again seeing the family, her daughters, she had th they had three daughters, her husband, they were married for 45 years. And just the brokenness around losing their mom. But the thing that she said at my funeral, it has to be a gospel message. And people have to know that Jesus was my saviour. And so when I first heard, and she was, she was uh, for a long time in remission, and then it suddenly came back, and it was just over very quickly. But um, when they formed a prayer page for the family, the first word that the Lord gave me for her to start praying is Psalm 23. And I just send it to the family. I just felt every time I thought of Letitia, the Holy Spirit just said, pray Psalm 23. And what does this pastor minister on at her funeral? He starts reading, the Lord is my shepherd, which was so powerful because he said to the people, the Lord is, in this psalm, it doesn't say the Lord is our shepherd. It actually says the Lord is my shepherd. So today, Letitia knew that Jesus was her shepherd. The question is, is he your shepherd? 
because he's not a general shepherd. He's actually your personal shepherd. And you can have an intimate and personal relationship with your shepherd. And then said, if you don't leave here today, if Jesus is not your shepherd yet. So an absolute salvation uh, message and truly a celebration of just who she was. Because as painful as death is, the hope that we have, that we're going to see one another again, it just makes all the difference. Because it gives you a separateness in your spirit that we sojourn us in this life. But we have a blessed assurance that Jesus is mine. And that if this life ends, absent in the body, present with the Lord. So just three quick things that I want to share with you. What Christmas is really about. And we know it well. And you would hear this uh, scripture many times this time of the year in Luke 2.10. Where it says... I bring you good news of great joy, for unto you, a, for unto us is born today a Saviour who is Christ the Lord, and peace on earth, good will toward men. And um, that was the proclamation from the angel when they um, announced the birth of Jesus Christ. So the first thing is celebration. You know, the one thing that God wants us not to to not do is not to celebrate. I can't believe sometimes you have um, religions that you're not allowed to do anything any longer. How sad. Seriously. Celebration is actually so much a part of who God is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when I um, got married to Sean, and of course we have a birthday boy with us tonight, so that's why we're celebrating his birthday. Afterwards, you can join us for a cupcake, and uh, we'll, um, we'll sing afterwards <laughs> to the birthday boy. But in my family growing up, we would, um, actually my dad was really, and my mom as well, but my dad was really like, like the real saying, we're outgoing, always inviting people. But birthdays and, and Christmas was, was sort of celebrated, but I never remember that it was like over the top. It was really low-key, and then I guess if you grow up in the outback where there's hardly anything, and it's as hard as, you know what, <laughs> on Christmas Day you, you actually just want to uh, eat cold meat and salads <laughs> and get it over with. Anyway... But then when I got connected with Sean and we got married, Sean's family and uh, just their family traditions around celebrations really rubbed off uh, on me. But then when we went to live in Austria, you know, guys, no, they just take it to a whole nother level of celebration. And what was so amazing to me in that culture for those of you who don't know, we lived in Austria for ten and a half years. We were church planters. And um, as I explained to you what my Christmases were growing up, here we found ourselves in a white Christmas. In snow. snow. Now, we had no, like, zero experience with driving in the snow. And we live up a mountain in a snow hole. So, oh my gosh, we had angels specially assigned to the Morrises and to Julie to drive up and down that mountain when the snow was falling. It was just the funniest thing. We have so many funny stories. But once you have a white Christmas, and oh my goodness, in the snow and you rug up with a scarf, with a, a warm jacket, and uh, everywhere is just candles and... Um, um, markets, the, the smell of um, cinnamon and um, Orange and glue, vine. glue vine, but also um, chestnuts. Oh, yeah. Many of you that's traveled in Europe will know they do chestnuts everywhere in these little, you know, uh, fire... Uh, um, 
roasters and, and you buy them and you eat them like that. Soft. <laughs> so delicious. Anyway, just um, brings back such good memories. But the Austrians truly taught us how to really celebrate and to have a good time. Here you have people, and this is the funniest thing. Look, look in South Africa, and I think it was similar here in, Austria, uh, in Australia, is that uh, if, if you grew up sort of, and especially with my background, real conservative, and I was always out there, I mean, you know, the kids were sort of wanting to walk away, away from the traditional things. The traditions in Austria is so steeped in those families. You have them with pink, green hair like Josh Muscovich, ear pieces, piercings and everything. Tattoos. Tattoos and everything. And there they have their um, um, genitals and their um, traditional lederhosen on and they play in the umpapa band and they do their little dances and everything. And it's just I mean, you cannot sit there and not get joyful and feel like you want to be a part of it. And then I want to say to you, our Jewish roots, because the moment you start hearing a Jewish song, what does it do? Your feet actually feels like it starts to move without you having to. Because that is something that God has built into us as a people so that we can truly celebrate and when we celebrate, it releases joy. Yes. It's infectious. I've never been to any celebration, a 21st, an engagement, a wedding, where people come like they look like they're going to a funeral. Come on now. I mean, we don't look, oh, I'm going not to a 21st tonight. <laughs> we don't. We and the person who's birthed, oh my gosh, they look like they're just, you know, over the moon with joy, bursting. And there's something about what God releases when we celebrate and make fuss of somebody's birthday. Or the greatest gift about Christmas is this is again just how incredible Jesus is because he has his birthday, but he says, you know what? I want you guys to give each other gifts and bless each other. Be nice to kind to one another and give each other good gifts. Amen. And that's just the nature of God, isn't it? I mean, how selfless is Jesus? And then I want to say to you, so the power of Christmas is the gift of celebration. And let's tap into the gift that God has given us in Jesus Christ to be able to celebrate life. Amen. Yes. We've got so much. I, I actually, and especially in, in this lockdown, seriously guys, it's been tough. But, but there are nations that have it so <coughs> yes. worse than we do. We've just got to be grateful and celebrate and be uh, um, of good cheer because it also cheers up other people yes. it brings joy to people when we celebrate amen yes. so don't step back celebrate yes. as a family celebrate the gift share the goodness of god with one another don't hold back so the next part of that scripture is, so the first one is, I bring you good news of great joy. So that's the celebration. For unto you is born today a Savior who is Christ the Lord. The second gift is salvation. Now, I read something that is so powerful from uh, Rick Warren's book. He actually wrote a new book. You know, he's the guy who wrote The Purpose Driven Life. But he wrote for Christmas, this Christmas season, he wrote a book, What is the Purpose of Christmas? And then shares um, this illustration. He says, I believe that Jesus Christ was who he claimed he was, the Son of God, that came in human form, that if God wanted to, 
to communicate to ants, he would have become an ant. There's another, there's another one for the, evolu uh, you know, the, um, what you call them, not the evolutionists, the, what believe, reincarnations, nests. <laughs> um, he would have become an ant. If he'd wanted you to communicate to cows, he would have become a cow. But he wanted to communicate to human beings, so he became one of us. Yeah. It's hard for me to relate to, we know the force, and those of you that are big um, Star, Wars. Star Wars fans, you know, may the force be with you. I know you all know that, most probably really good. I need a God with skin on. We don't just need to know that we have a force that is with us. And when people, the esoterics come and they talk about the universe and the stars and everything, why would I go to the universe or to the stars and not to the one who actually created them? Yeah. Go to the source, yeah. not to the force. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. I need a God with skin on it. So my God looks like Jesus Christ. That when I see him, I see God in human form and I can go, oh, that's what God is like. And I can get to know him. And of course, <clears throat> it split history into uh, uh, AD and BC. And even people who are unbelievers and atheists, every time they use the date, 2020, they're using Jesus Christ as a focal point, as the reference point of the very reason why we are all here and he is the center of our salvation. And not just of our salvation when we make a, a, a decision to accept Christ as our Lord and Savior. But he delivers us continually. That is what salvation means. So salvation is not just when I get saved. When I become a believer. Salvation has become an absolute integral part of my walk with God. Amen. And salvation actually means deliverance from harm, from ruin, and from loss. Wow. Awesome. Come on. Yeah. That is who Jesus, that is our salvation. Amen. And then, from, an, um, theo from a theological point of view, the deliverance from sin and its consequences... This is what Christians believe that uh, um, believe by it's believed by Christians to be um, to be brought about by faith in Jesus Christ. So this is again a secular um, definition where they declare that if somebody says that they um, that salvation is theirs, it means that they've been delivered from sin and its consequences, and that we as believers accept it by faith. Even though we haven't seen it in the flesh, we've accepted by faith. And because I believe it, the fruit of that salvation is that God uh, protects me from harm, from ruin, and from loss. He delivers my soul. Good. Isn't that powerful? Yeah. Yeah. And then I want to add to you that Jesus did not just pay for our sin, but he destroyed the power of sin. That is the greater power of salvation. Yes. That is now something that I can appropriate that when the enemy comes with temptation, Jesus has already made the way. He says, I will make a way of escape. When temptation come, we just need to cry out to him. Amen? And that means that I have been set free through the salvation of Jesus Christ paying my sins yesterday, today, and forever. And I've been reconciled to him. Amen, Trudy.
and he is mine. Yes. He is mine. Amen. 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 Yes. Wow. Yes. And the third part of that to uh, Luke 2 10 is and let there be peace on earth and goodwill toward men. And here I want to say add to what um, Rod has also shared. This is actually the season of not holding on to grudges. I actually had this opportunity this week. So believe it or not, that um, there are people that just betray you. And uh, that, you know, the relationship sort of goes south. And sometimes you get confronted with these people again, and then you have a choice to make. And I had one of those opportunities this week. Praise God, I remembered joy to the world. Because <laughs> <laughs> I saw this person that I haven't seen since something terrible was done to us. And um, this person, then, uh, despite the fact that, of course, we're wearing masks, recognized me. I wonder why, how? How did he recognize me? <laughs> it's a mystery. <laughs> and <laughs> and um, but when the person saw me, it was like they wanted the earth to swallow them up. <laughs> and I had three opportunities and three things that actually went through my mind. First was, shall I do a Sean on them? Or a Holy Spirit thing? <laughs> and that is moving in the opposite spirit and go to the person and go, hello, how are you? Long time no see. <laughs> I just knew that's not me, I can't do that. <laughs> Second opportunity I had was to go to the person and say hi, Good to see you. What on earth were you thinking? <laughs> what did we do to you to deserve what you've done to us? Come on now. And then I just decided, you know what? It's Christmas. <laughs> Joy to the world and peace on earth. And goodwill taught men. And I made the decision, I'll just bless that person and just walk away. And forgive and release. Amen. Truly. Come on, just bless and release and just move on. I want to tell you something about the life of Job. God did not just restore to him double, after all his troubles, but the Bible says that he actually prayed for his enemies and those who persecuted him. And that was part of the restoration that came in his life. Yeah. Just remember, forgiveness is a greater gift to you than it is to somebody else. Come on now. Wow. Yes, awesome. Forgiveness is a greater gift to you than it is to somebody else. Yeah. And I have the choice to make that decision. Every time I see somebody who's done me in, who has done me wrong, or uh, um, I felt, you know, didn't treat me correctly, I've got to let it go. Yeah. Vengeance belongs to the Lord. Give them to the Lord. Amen. But for your own freedom, for your own joy, and for your own peace, bless them. Bless them. Let it go. Yeah. So on that note, I want to leave with you guys that if you want <clears throat> to lead a life of joy, start with Christmas. Yeah. Because God in all his love and kindness and predestination of purpose for us as his children saw the incredible value in all of us and gave his son not holding back anything so that you and I can truly and joy is not determined by circumstances 
The fruit of the Spirit, according to Ephesians 5.22, is that the second fruit is love, joy, peace. Yes. Lives in us. He lives in us. And that's why wherever we go, we can just allow the bubbling up of that joy because in His presence, yeah. there is fullness of joy. Amen. There is fullness of joy. And that's what I want to leave with you tonight.